Hello and welcome to cake. Today we're making a Kilimanjaro cake. This cake looks impressive, is fruity and super delicious. Let's jump right into the ingredients. By the way, you can find the exact measurements in the link below, also in cup measurements. I begin with four eggs. I'm gonna let them beat for about a minute before adding 150 grams of sugar and one pack of vanilla sugar. Alternatively, just two tablespoons of vanilla extract. The stand mixer is going to have to beat the eggs for about 15 minutes, not 8 minutes, not 10 minutes, really 15 full minutes. In the meantime, you can turn on the oven and prepare the dry ingredients. Add 180 grams of flour, 20 grams of cocoa powder unsweetened, 1.5 tablespoons of baking powder and a dash of salt. This is what the egg mixture looks like after 15 minutes, it's super creamy. I'm going to fold in the dry ingredients really gently in about 3 different batches. I'm going to bake this cake in a cake ring, which I've set to a 20 centimeter diameter, or I think eight inches. And I've lined it with parchment paper and I found some really great instructions on YouTube on how to do this. I would be glad to share those links with you below in the description box. I'm gonna pour in the batter. And as I mentioned, I've already preheated my oven. It's set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. And this cake is going to bake for about 28 to 30 minutes. And this is what it looks like when it's done. I'm going to let it cool for about five minutes in the ring before removing the ring. Then I'm going to flip it upside down and let it cool for another hour so I don't burn myself while working with it later on. Now I'm ready to start cutting the cake. We're going to be cutting this cake into three different layers. We're going to cut two relatively thick layers and one thin layer. The thin layer should be the original base of the cake. Then I'm going to cut a border out of the middle layer of the cake. So I'm taking a small bowl which leaves me about an inch around the cake and I'm gonna cut it with a knife. We're gonna keep all parts of this cake, nothing is going to be thrown away. Now to the thin layer of the cake, which was the original bottom and is gonna become the new top. We're gonna to cut this into eight equally sized triangles. Now I'm ready to start preparing the filling. For the filling, I'm using quark, which is kind of an equivalent ingredient to Greek yogurt. So if you don't have quark in your neighborhood, you're free to use Greek yogurt, 500 grams of it, and then 200 grams of heavy cream, 300 grams of strawberry jam, and one pack of agartine, which is about 15 grams, or equivalent to six leaves of gelatin. I'm gonna let the agartine um, soak in the heavy cream for a couple of minutes and in the meantime I'm going to combine the jam with the quack or Greek yogurt alternatively. If you're using Greek yogurt make sure it's a little bit more dense and not too liquid. Otherwise you're gonna have to add a little bit more gelatin to it. I'm going to take one tablespoon of marmalade or jam and just put it aside in a small bowl and I'll work on that in a second. To this tablespoon of jam, I'm going to add five tablespoons of hot water. This is going to become a syrup with which I will moisten the cake. Thank you. 
Now to the agar or gelatin in your case, if you don't have agar, I'm going to bring the heavy cream to a boil and let it simmer for about five to 10 seconds. Remove it from the heat and stir it to cool it down just a little bit and then add it to my quack or to the Greek yogurt mix. Agar tends to stick to the base of the pot, so I'm just gonna scrape it off and add it to the quack mixture. All right, this is gonna go into the fridge for about an hour and after an hour, you will notice that at least the top layer has built like a gelatin kind of consistency, which is perfect. It's not completely firm yet, but that's fine. We can work with this at this point. Now we're gonna bring all parts together. So this is the previous top of the cake. It's now gonna become the base of the cake. I'm gonna moisten it with my strawberry syrup. Then I'm gonna place the border on it and then wrap it again with my cake ring just to make sure that everything stays put. Then I'll add about 12 to 15 tablespoons of the filling. Place the smaller cake on top of this. And now I'm going to distribute the triangles which we were cutting out originally around this. I've moistened the inner side of these triangles and I'm now placing them around. I'm not sure what works better if you're supposed to put the triangles first and then the filling or the filling first. See what works for you. To decorate the cake, I'm using some preserved peaches out of the can. I'm taking about four halves and cutting them in thin slices and then distributing them in a circular pattern on the filling. Now this cake has to go into the fridge for three to four hours so the filling sets and I can remove the spring form or the cake ring. Now I'm ready for the final touches. Obviously this is optional but I really enjoyed this additional crunch of chocolate. So I'm melting about 150 grams of bittersweet chocolate with 30 grams of butter and I'm going to melt it over a water bath. I'm also going to take 50 grams of chocolate and I'm going to crush it up or grind it and then I'm going to distribute the melted chocolate all over the cake. and dusted with my powdered chocolate. And then finally, I'm going to dust the top of my Kilimanjaro cake with some powdered sugar. And then I'm done and ready to serve this cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more delicious recipes and creative ideas. Thank you for watching and see you next time.